Traditional theories of tort liability require a plaintiff to prove that a specific defendant acted negligently and that the negligence caused the plaintiff's injury. But what happens when it's not quite clear how the plaintiff was injured or who among several actors behaved negligently? Is the injured person out of luck? The California Supreme Court addressed that question in Ibarra v. Spangard. Joseph Ibarra experienced abdominal pain and went to see Dr. Tilly, who diagnosed him with appendicitis. Ibarra required immediate surgery. Dr. Tilly arranged for Dr. Spangard, a surgeon, to perform an appendectomy on Ibarra at a hospital owned by Dr. Swift. Ibarra was wheeled into the operating room by Nurse Gisler, a hospital nurse employed by Dr. Swift. Dr. Reeser, the anesthesiologist, arranged Ibarra's body on the operating table, laying him against two hard objects at the top of his shoulders. Dr. Reeser then administered the anesthetic, and Ibarra lost consciousness. After the surgery, Ibarra was attended by Nurse Thompson. When Ibarra awoke, he suffered from pain and partial paralysis of his right shoulder and arm. Despite treatment, Ibarra's injury didn't improve, but only got worse. Ibarra consulted another doctor, who determined his condition was the result of a trauma or strain to his right shoulder and neck. Ibarra sued doctors Tilly, Spangard Swift, and Reeser, and nurses Gisler and Thompson, alleging that somebody's negligence caused the injury. He argued his case using the doctrine of res ipsa loquitur, which means the thing speaks for itself. According to this theory, the only likely cause of Ibarra's injuries was negligence on the part of one or more of the nurses and doctors. Therefore, he was entitled to recover from all or some of them. However, the trial court ruled that Ibarra hadn't described the specific negligence that injured him and hadn't identified the responsible parties. The court dismissed Ibarra's lawsuit against all the defendants. Ibarra appealed to the California Supreme Court.